Hi everyone, I'm Flora Posterero. And I'm Carrie Perry, and this is Chick to Chick. Every day, everybody does the same thing because it's really important every single day. Yeah. Can I answer what, what that is? What? What is it? Do you know? Miss Flora, I think it's that they check the weather. You're so right, Carrie Perry. <laughs> Why do we do that? Why are we obsessed with the weather? Well, I think it's important. I mean, before you head out to work and before the kids go to school, you want to know what the weather is. Sure. Are they supposed to have a jacket? Do they need an umbrella? How cold right. is it going to be? It actually has an impact on your day. And as I say, True. whether it's the weather, you need to know True. to plan your day. What are you going to do? Do I need a raincoat? Do I need an umbrella? What do you need to do? This is why when I lived in Arizona, I forgot weather existed. Because it was like <laughs> 72 and sunshine. And the only thing that happened was during like monsoon season that everybody cared. But, you know, being in Pennsylvania brings so much of weather and the, and the different seasons. You know, it's a good thing we have someone that's going to help us Talk about I that. Who that is. I can tell you because I have that answer too. Do you? I do. You just know it all, man. I do. It's CBS <laughs> 21's meteorologist Tom Russell. And you know what, Tom? You know what you're going to tell me today? You're going to tell me I'm going to have a great ski season, aren't you, Tom? <laughs> well, I'm just learning that you were such a big uh, a ski person. So uh, I think you're going to be okay. Eventually, I'll explain. Oh, Ooh, there you go, Flora. There's a teaser. Yeah, he said eventually he will explain. So, Tom, yeah. this area I think is very interesting. She brought up Arizona where the weather really okay. isn't an issue. Mm -hmm. And if you live in Orange County, California, you know it's going to be sunny every single day and cool in the evenings. How difficult is it to predict the weather in this area in central Pennsylvania and really across Pennsylvania? <laughs> you know, it, it really is a challenge. I lived in San Diego for a little while. Uh, I moved here from Orlando, Florida, uh, where you just didn't worry about, you know, half of the seasons that we worry about here. In other words, winter just uh, doesn't exist there. So it, there's definitely a challenge. Uh, and as a weather person, we love all four seasons because it really is four distinct challenges for us. So there's a lot to go into it. You can feel the winds right now as we're talking, right? Uh, we're talking about... Uh, you know, feeling the effects of uh, as we're getting colder here now that we're in December and we're talking about, uh, you know, that change that we feel. But, you know, between the topography, the mountains, we're, we're close to the Atlantic. There's so many influences on weather. It really is a challenge, but they're distinct with each force, each of the different seasons. You know, over the years, um, there have been a lot of technological differences and changes and things that I feel like either um, make your job easier or maybe it's just become so tech savvy. But walk us through what it's like now versus, you know, years ago when you started this business. And is it easier with the new technology for the weather? Well, it's a really good question because the way I would explain it is the more we know, the less we understand. And by that, I mean, we get so technical, we get so much deeper into it that there's a, there's whole new avenues that we open up that we didn't know uh, how things work. For example, I go back in my career 20 years, uh, 30 years, and we didn't know things like El Nino. We knew they existed, but we couldn't predict them. El Nino is an unusual warming in the equatorial Pacific. So you say, well, why do we care about that? Well, that influences our weather patterns in the United States. So something like being able to predict El Nino has made things uh, much better for us. The biggest advancement, though, is really uh, computer models and being able to process information so much faster. So we can run models multiple times a day where, you know, we when I first started the business, you were lucky if you had one forecast model that ran for a week and then you'd have to wait another week for the next one. So the advancement technologically on that side has really helped. And I think the biggest thing where you see it is, you know, you go back to uh, a three day forecast 20 years ago, uh, you know, now we can do a five day forecast with that same accuracy. So we've definitely come a long way, but there's so much more that we have to learn and how things interplay. The, the biggest advancement in the last 20 years is probably how the oceans and the atmosphere interface and how that works together. You talked about the models and it's interesting because I'll hear you saying the European model and this model and mm -hmm. that model. How do you know which model to go with? 
<laughs> well, well, that's a really good question because it, it really is. I always talk about weather being part art, part science. And the art part is trying to figure out, okay, we have all these great forecast models, but which one has the best handle on a situation? So, for example, there's models that uh, work better in the summer with heat. There's models that work better with snow. Maybe Carrie's getting excited about the upcoming snowstorm. Uh, there's certain models that work better with tropical systems. So part of our job as forecasters is to figure out what model has the best handle on a certain situation. And that changes throughout the season and throughout the year. So my question would be about the Farmer's Almanac. That seems to be, you know, what <laughs> gives that what whole that? trajectory. <laughs> how, how, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes you look at that and it's kind of like looking up your horoscope. What's that going to be <laughs> next month? You know? So, um, of course, my question I'm leading into is, let's yes. say this year's Farmer's Almanac says it's going to be a very cold, you know, winter. I know that helps a lot of people prepare. Makes me miserable. Sure. It makes me so excited. Because <laughs> it's all about you, it, isn't it? It's it, all about you. Stay tuned. It's as about to be the Carrie Winter happy, Show. As happy, the rest of us can freeze. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care what you do. I'm going skiing. That is if Tom tells me we're going to have a good winter. I think a lot of people listening want to know what's winter going to be like this you know this season so what what are you going to tell us tom yeah, hold out your palms so I can read your palms. <laughs> <laughs> it says um, long winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does. It, it does. Uh, what it looks like, guys, is we have kind of a backloaded winter. And by that, I mean it takes a little while to get going. Remember last year we had snow in November, middle of November, and we had a lot of little snows along the way. But overall, the winter was not that cold. So I think this year it takes a little while to get going. But once it gets going, then it lingers for a while. So in other words, not really hitting hard until after the holiday days. But once it does, it's going to be one of those winters that lingers into March and maybe April. And uh, and I think for you, Carrie, I think we got a chance at some decent snowfall. Last year was a lot of little snows. I think we had a better chance of seeing a few bigger snows, maybe not as frequent, but when they come, uh, a little bit more snow. So I think you'll be good. And you already saw out west. I know you like to ski out west, too. They had an early ski right. season. I mean, really early this year. So they've already got a good base and things. Yeah. Are you I'm, happy? Are I you am. Ha I you just got thrilled. your Christmas present early. Did you early. see the sparkle in my eyes? Yeah, she's grinning <laughs> like the Grinch. I did like, one ear to ear. I put yeah. the tiger word in. And your heart went bubble, bubble, bubble. Oh, she's just, all excited. I, you know, you know. here's the thing about um, all of the seasons in Pennsylvania. I think, I think if you can embrace some aspect of every one of them, then you can really enjoy it. So maybe you're not a skier, but my gosh, this sounds like fun for sledding days for the kids and <laughs> building snowmen. I mean, there's got to be something positive about, you know, the snow that's coming. Thank you, Tom. That I <laughs> and now well, what, what is your favorite season, Flora? Uh, I like I like spring and I do love fall. I love all the different colors and I like that cool Fall reminds me of the weather in um, in Orange County, California, where, you know, it's nice and pleasant during in the day, day mm -hmm. and it's cool cooler at night. At night. I, I really, really like that. Um, I, you know, a lot of people know I was in broadcasting for so many years, and I would hear this all the time. What's up with this weather? Can't you talk <laughs> to the weatherman? Can't you fix it? And I'm like, um, yeah, he's not mm -hmm. God. Right. How do you deal with that all the time? Because when the weather's bad, you get the blame for it. When the weather's nice, right. you really don't get the credit for it. Right. And you get all sure. these snarky comments all the time as though you have some control over that foot of snow that we might get. How do you <laughs> deal with that? You know, you get you got to have a thick skin, that's for sure. Um, but it, it's a very humbling business because just when you think you have a handle on everything, uh, you don't. You got to divert to a higher power. But um, the good thing about it is Everybody's affected by the weather. Everybody wants to talk about the weather. And most people do understand that, you know, you don't really control it. But you'll be surprised how many people, like, I'll get a call from a mom that says, uh, oh, my daughter's getting married in the spring. Can you tell me what June 5th is? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Lady, I can't tell you next week. You want me to tell you? Uh, you mean you so, don't have a direct line to God to mother, say, God, or Mother uh, Nature. Hello. Hey, Mother Nature, it's Tom. <laughs> it's me. Yeah. Uh, but, but we really have come a long way. We talked about that a little earlier. I, I think our advancement and, and part of that you know, people making fun of us is because we have gotten better at our job. And, and there's an expectation now that, hey, you know, within two, three, four days, you should know exactly when things are going to happen. And uh, and even at that time scale, sometimes we, you know, we still miss them here and now. But I, I think we're pretty good overall. And I think that uh, we're only going to get better as time goes on.
That's good stuff. I mean, I, I think that it's a really cool um, business to be in. And I think a lot more young people are looking at the potential of being a meteorologist. It's not just being a weather person. I think it's got a lot of science and excitement and all those good things. So, you know, I think more people should look into it. I think it's a really good career, actually. I, I find it interesting, Tom. I really do. Well, and the other well, uh, aspect of that, if I could just jump in there very quickly, I have heard a lot of kids who are going to Penn State, which has an excellent program, mm -hmm. to major in meteorology, but you don't have to be a meteorologist to get that degree. There are so many other careers out there. Right. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because when I go and I do school talks and things, everybody thinks of, you know, the person being on TV and all this generation, even the really the previous generation now have grown up with the Weather Channel. So they've heard the terms. They they know some about the science. And I think what's exciting is is girls and females have gotten involved because of the push for STEM uh, and they've really gone the science route. But you're right. What I always tell kids is, you know, think about who relies on the weather, airlines, uh, agriculture, farmers, uh, and now the hospitality industry. You like to go skiing. They have their own in-house meteorologists so they can plan ahead. Uh, the energy sector, there's, it just, there's, there's nothing that we do in our society that really doesn't come down to weather. And uh, it, it's such an exciting field that I hope kids look way beyond just being on TV and, and realize that there's a lot of really neat careers out there. There really it's are. Story. Hey, Tom, thanks so much for hanging out with the chicks today. Thanks for uh, putting up with us. And, and Thanks for a great winter forecast for oh, me. That's all she cares about because it's all about her, Tom. Exactly. <laughs> all about I her. can see that. Yeah. <laughs> today. Well, ladies, for thank today. you so much for having me. You guys are so much fun. And, and today I get to be an honorary chick. So thank you. Yay, he's an honorary thank chick. You. He's Love an it. honorary <laughs> chick. Thanks, Tom. So are you happy? You got your early Christmas present. Look at you. You're like, I'm so glowing. I haven't seen her this happy since never. Since five minutes ago because I'm next to you. No, but I tell you the thing about um, the weather that it's it's true. I remember kind of being bored when I lived in Arizona when you looked at the weather. Like I thought, what kind of job do they have? They just yeah. roll up and go, yep, kick their feet up on the desk. It's the same thing as it was yesterday. Hold on. Monsoon season is coming. But I really, um, you know, I could hear in Tom that he really loves his job yep. and that he likes that there's even more technology out there. And I really love that he talked about the educational p component of it in STEM. So it's all good. Yep. And whether you, you like it or not, you're going to have or, weather. Right. And you don't have to be on TV to get your degree in meteorology. There's so many other careers right. out there. We love it that you tuned in to be with us today. We are all over social media, Chick to Chick USA. We're on Facebook, Instagram, all over the place, YouTube. Exactly. You should subscribe to our YouTube channel because then every Monday morning, you are going to get notified that there is a new Chick to Chick episode. So just subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will be back next Monday to chirp about another topic. <laughs>